So I'm going to introduce uh, uh, America's favorite old man. Uh, he's on a 10 day tour for uh, the village and he's going on a four month tour to the East Coast. And uh, all of this is done uh, out of the kindness of his heart. So I want you to put a warm hands together for guess who? Arizona Lou! What a group. I love that. My name's Lewis Self. I'm the producer of this show. And if you're new to stand-up comedy, you need to understand a few things. You don't visit during the show because you do, you'll miss the jokes and someone will have to explain it to you and then you both miss the jokes and pretty soon your comedian's totally confused and you don't want that to happen. And this is the only time you can get out your cell phones. Make sure they're turned off or on vibrate. One time I was doing a show and, and my phone started making music. Well, I looked at it. It wasn't a phone call. That would have stopped after about 20 seconds. It was some stupid alarm. It was a new phone. I didn't know how to shut it off, so I stuck it back in my pocket and just did the rest of the thing with stupid music. So I've always got to check mine. Then when it vibrates in your pocket, mm. It depends on which pocket it's in. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, uh, I have my choice. <laughs> and, and uh, oh yes, if you enjoy what you see tonight, be sure to tell your friends. If you don't like what you see, tell your mother-in-law. <laughs> our comedy, our comedian style of comedy is his own invention. He calls it PG-16. No foul language, but does delve into some adult concepts. So if that disturbs you, when that comes along, just plug your ears and you'll enjoy the rest of the show. And our uh, comedian has done, this is his 1,392nd appearance. That just, <laughs> thank you. That just shows how good he is. <laughs> at counting. <laughs> so I want you to put your hands together for retired school teacher, America's favorite old man, Arizona Lou. Woo! Woo! Oh, go. oh, Hi, I'm Arizona Lou. I want to thank you for lighting an old guy up here. You ask how old? How old? How old? 81. Can anybody beat that? Let's hear it by applause. Okay, now I need to explain something to you two people. I said let's hear it by applause. And you did this. But you're over 81, so we understand. That's all right. And in case I ask for an applause again, remember it takes two hands and it makes noise. <laughs> Let's give a hand to the people that are over 81. <laughs> the old parts. At my age, yep, at my age I do silly stuff, like trying to still stay alive <laughs> till the end of the show. <laughs> and I worry a lot about what's going to fall off. Next. And my last name isn't even Jenner. I keep looking for body parts that are not saggy or wrinkled. I'm so wrinkled the other day I had trouble adjusting my tidy whities. <laughs> until I realized I wasn't wearing any. <laughs> now you're laughing too hard on that one, so we understand. We, we, we understand each other. Well, must be Alzheimer's. I have a, all profits from my merchandise over there goes to Alzheimer's research. And over there, free of charge, are 10 early signs of Alzheimer's. You can use them with that Molly. 
And, and there's no joke. But number one on their list is you forget stuff. I think that should be the whole list. And they've got other things, though. They have a change in mood. And I'm happier than ever. I forgot everything to be, to be unhappy about. And then there's avoiding people and social situations. That's not my problem. I'm with you folks. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> I always enjoyed every time I come here to El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> then there's difficulty with familiar tasks, like using a can opener. I was wondering how my dog was getting so skinny. <laughs> Oh, come on, you animal lovers, I don't have a dog. <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> Sometimes it gets embarrassing. This morning I forgot to pull up my zipper. <laughs> don't look down there. <laughs> Not as bad as yesterday, I forgot to pull it down. <laughs> And they wondered why I was carrying a big clock in front of me in Walmart covering my target. <laughs> and then there's losing stuff. How do you misplace a minivan? Give me a big parking lot and I'll figure it out. <laughs> it would be so easy for me to remember to look at my row number. But no, I'm rushing into Walmart to look at the clocks. <laughs> and then there's difficulty with words, time, and space. And if I'm lucky, I'll remember what I want to say tonight. If you're lucky, I'll wander off somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Silver alert! <laughs> I could get on one of those electronic highway signs. I, I just love those things. They give you such important information you need to know. Like, uh, well, in Pennsylvania they had one that said motorcycles. Orange, you glad you look? I did at the signs and have no idea how many motorcycles I took out. <laughs> Driving here, I carefully read every distracting sign. And I can't tell you how many accidents I caused, <laughs> but I can tell you how many minutes to an intersection that I have no idea where is or care about. <laughs> Neither does anybody else. Oh, and they've started putting two messages on one sign so they distract you twice as often while you're supposed to be watching traffic. You can tell I really like those things. I just hope I don't wander off to Chicago. You see the news? Shootings are up 88% over last year. Oh. Murders are up too, but only 72%. Obviously, obviously we need to give Chicago more gun classes. <laughs> Improve their aim. <laughs> we got the guy. Speaking of aim, you people here have terrible aim. Now don't get offended, I can tell from the puddle in front of your urinals. And, yeah, you ladies, you'll, you'll, you'll have to just use your imagination here. But you guys even have a target in your urinal. Jane. Hanoi Jane. Yes. How do you know about this? <laughs> what have you been doing sneaking in? <laughs> 
sort of they're bragging in the, in the bar area. In, in Tennessee, they have Hanoi Jane and Nancy Pelosi, but they're higher in the urinal. I noticed you guys put them low in the urinal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for John. <laughs> Go splashy. That way he can, he can hit it more easily. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's hear up by applause if you're over 30, over 45. Yay! Are you asleep? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I understand. She doesn't want to do another one of these, and she doesn't want to applaud either. <laughs> Keep that applause going if you've had your colonoscopy. <laughs> Yeah. And those of you who haven't, you better hop to it because they save lives. And you, young buddies under that age, put it on your electronic calendar. 45 colonoscopy. <laughs> I had my most recent colonoscopy without anesthesia. I, yeah, I looked, I read on the internet and it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Well, you know, you do the prep. Uh, could somebody give me a, a, a little glass with about this much water in it, just a little bit in case I get dry? Could, could, could you give me a glass with about this much water in it in case I get dry? Everybody does it. Are waiting for the joke on that one? We're all way ahead trying to figure out where'd you go with this. I like you guys. <laughs> well, let's see. What was I talking about before I got distracted? Colonoscopy. Oh, no. no, 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 yes. You go through all the prep the day ahead. Well, I went the extra mile. I don't know if my doctor noticed or appreciated, but I did some exercises with a butt plug. <laughs> And you've had experience with those things, haven't you? <laughs> and before he went in, the doctor said, Lou, I'm going to use some numbing gel. Wouldn't regular gel be more fun? <laughs> Thank you. Laying there on the table, I had never seen my butt in high def on a big screen, 4K. But I did find out what the final approach looks like for a gay guy. <laughs> the doctor said, if it gets painful when I put the gas in, let me know and I'll slow down. So I did, and he did. It worked out just fine. After, oh, his, his probe was high tech. Now he had special medical names for these things, but his, his probe, it was like a train going through a little tunnel with an air compressor to inflate the tunnel around the tight corners and a big headlight and a video camera. And he found a, a little polyp, wouldn't have been found otherwise, and he used his mushroom picker and rinsed it off with a garden hose and cleaned everything up with a shop vac. And then they put me in a wheelchair and wheeled me to the edge of the parking structure, and on the way home, I stopped by the grocery store and gym, and the next one I'm going to do the same way recommend it, but you don't have to. Let's hear it by, oh, oh yes, there's something else. I was part of a clinical study sponsored by Stanford University of posture and back pain. And Carson there examined my pelvis real closely he had his mouth closed <laughs> at first. 
and I had shorts on the whole time. He said, Lou, your right hip is lower than your left hip. Well, Carson, I can take care of that. <laughs> and Lou, you need more curve in your spine. I can take care of that too. <laughs> oh, and Lou, your shoulders are rounded. You need to hold your shoulders back more. Carson, I can take care of everything. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? I don't know, but he sure has good posture. <laughs> Let's hear, let's hear it by applause if you're a middle child. A middle? Middle? Yes. Only one. Well, we've got a few. They say we have more problems. Well, I was a middle child. My little brother, George, now is my big brother. And he's 75. My older brother, Stanley, lived in Hutchinson, Kansas. That's where we lost him. <laughs> Never did find him. <laughs> Some people say, how can you make fun of that stuff? Well, he's probably up there just laughing. <laughs> well, Stanley uh, was into supplements, and now he has the healthiest prostate of anybody in the Greenwood Cemetery. <laughs> He was also into real estate. Anybody here have any rental properties? Okay, well then, you appreciate He was into real estate if you count one duplex that was still standing only because the east half was leaning against the west half. I'm not saying Stanley was stupid, but he let Billy move in rent-free in exchange for fixing up the place. Well, you know how that went. <coughs> Billy moved in a carload of cockroaches. <laughs> Actually, it was worse. He moved in Don, his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> At least I think that's what was under all those tattoos. She was so wrinkled it was hard to tell. <laughs> but she had a winning smile. If you count three teeth. But she was so wrinkled because she was a chain smoker. Yeah, Has anybody here smoked any chains? <laughs> Her winning smile, though, consisted of three teeth. <laughs> they made an excellent cigarette holder. <laughs> she could puff her way right through a Kansas tornado. <laughs> I need to explain to you, young people, that's an old movie with a scarecrow and a little dog. <laughs> We, we, you know, I could, I could hang up the microphone, I'd go home and you people have fun the rest of the evening. I don't even here. Well, we lost Stanley in Hutchinson, Kansas. I guess he forgot to click his heels together. <laughs> Oh, and you people with Alzheimer's at the same movie with the scarecrow and the little people. <laughs> oh, we, when I was a kid, mother used to say, oh, let me tell you a little bit more about Don. I never saw Billy. She said he was in government housing. Oh, she called it jail. <laughs> Her pride and joy was not the giant screen television she had blaring all the time. It was the long extension cord she used to plug it in at the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
She was fancy though. She had a curved shower rod attached to the outside of the house because nothing worked inside. So she could use the garden hose. <laughs> Cleaning up after Stan's mess because <laughs> he left us. Uh, I learned a lot about white trash. Like I have a lot of room to talk. That was the year I spent with my old minivan, starting it with wires hanging from under the hood. Well, Mother used to say, Lewis, hold your horses. Of course, then in the 70s, during the space age, it was cool your jets. And what do you say nowadays if you want people to be patient? <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> sometimes it's sometimes it's slow your roll. Hold your horse. Take a chill pill. There you go. Hold your horse. Yeah. Hold on now. I don't know why we're still talking about horses. Somewhere between the horses and the jets, though, it was hold the phone. And I need to explain to you young people that singular because there was only one and it was fastened to the house with a wire. <laughs> you, couldn't put, you couldn't drive with your car. You couldn't take it in your car and get distracted driving that way. They didn't even have those electronic highway signs to distract you. You focused on your driving in those days. Well. Anyway, nowadays, hold the phone means something completely different. It means, here's my phone. Watch my video. Oh, don't hold it like that. You might send it to telephone never, never land. Oh, don't hold it that way. You might send it to mode to explode. So you have to cradle it on the palm of your hand. How many have done that, dropped it, and broken the screen? I see the rest of you need to watch more porn. <laughs> what <did it> happen? <laughs> There's other things you hold. There's the way I held my first grandchild. All it took was 10 seconds for me to understand crazy grandparents. Let's hear it by applause if you're a crazy grandparent. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Yay! There's other ways to hold grandkids. Like, <coughs> this one leaks. <laughs> Here, mommy. <laughs> Stinky baby. <laughs> or when they get older, you can hold them like this. <laughs> I hate ceiling fans. <laughs> Last week I lost three. <laughs> they still run, but they're unbalanced. <laughs> well, I have t shirts. <laughs> I've got your size. <laughs> Like I said, all prophets go to Alzheimer's research, if I remember. <laughs> and uh, the regular sizes are 10 bucks. I actually have a few colored ones that are 20 bucks. But if you want a t-shirt, you'll have something that's good for, well, wiping your dipstick. Or good for stinky baby. Check it. Also back there, I have email requests. If you want me to put you on my email list, you won't get more than six emails a year because I don't flood people's email box. Fill it out, stick it in the little box if you want me to put you on my email address. Pick up one of these. I've got some brochures back there and stuff. Also, I've got something in my pocket you've never seen before. Well, one person here has. 
This is my album. You've never seen an album that you can carry in your pocket, but it's a USB and plugs into your computer, flash drive. 20 bucks will get you over two and a half hours of comedy video. Plus, uh, album two is less family friendly than album three. So, so. <laughs> I ran out of album twos. I said, well, I don't need them anymore. People kept wanting album two, so I've got both of them back there, if you're interested. And also donates to Alzheimer's, so that's kind of cool. And that's so some things I just don't understand at my age. I don't understand why Sony put such crummy keyboards on their laptops. I was in the Dominican Republic and this computer would randomly duplicate letters or leave out letters. It left out the K, the L, and I called it the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Another time, that wasn't funny. <laughs> Another time, I excitedly emailed my daughter. I just got booked for three minutes at Harris Showroom. It left out the K, and I'd actually written, I just got booed for three minutes. <laughs> my daughter says, sorry about Harris, Dad. <laughs> And I don't understand today's vernacular and vocabulary sometimes. I was with some comedians in a restaurant, and Bill Lukowski belted out, Avery, get your hands off my jewel. Now, I didn't know you could spell that J-U-U-L, and that was a vaping device. Mm -hmm. The only kind of jewels I knew about were the family type. <laughs> What did I miss seeing? <laughs> what was Avery doing with his hands? And poor Bill with only one jewel? <laughs> and why did he have it up on the table? <laughs> and I don't understand about Kendall. They. I got a book for my Kindle, they called it the hardcover edition. How can that be when there's no cover? And how can it be hard when the book is software? <laughs> Nothing about this body gets hard, ever. <laughs> well, I take it back one thing in the morning. Keeps getting harder and harder rolling out of bed. <laughs> and I don't understand why they make the backs of televisions all black. It's dark as midnight back there. And plugging in your equipment is like plugging your hard pin into a black hole. And when you get the wrong hole, you say, I meant to do it that way. <laughs> of course, if you're from San Francisco, you aim for the wrong hole. <laughs> because you like it that way. <laughs> I went to Maui kiteboarding. Now you wonder what kiteboarding is. You're flying a huge kite. I've got videos on my website. Go to my website, ArizonaLoo.com, or just Google America's Favorite Old Man. I'll be at number one. But I've got videos about the kiteboarding there. But you're flying a huge kite, and it's pulling you on a wakeboard or a surfboard. And I went to Hawaii to go kiteboarding and do a little comedy. And we didn't have the usual wind. All we like is wind there. No, not that kind of wind. We didn't have the usual wind, so I did a lot of SUP. That's S-U-P, stand up paddle boarding. As opposed to what I do up here, SUP. 
S U C stand up comedy. <laughs> well, the first challenge for me was to get a 12 foot board across the beach down into the water. And actually, it went pretty well until I got stuck in the sand with my little electric rascal scooter. <laughs> So then I decided to hold the board sideways. And that went pretty well until I took out two kids, bing, bing, <laughs> and a mother breastfeeding a baby, <laughs> who was offending an old man until I took him out, dying, solved that social problem. <laughs> well then, when I got the board down into the water, my challenge was to go from my knees to standing up. And it looked something like this. <laughs> I should have brought a walker. <laughs> I did get away, though, from a lifeguard. <laughs> hey, get out of here. This beach is close to old men with great big boards and little tiny speedos. <laughs> Don't visualize that one. <laughs> I really did catch my first wave. To get that wave, it took me two years. But there on the Kahalua Harbor, I rode that little wave, 561 feet. My nurse never caught me. <laughs> <laughs> the last Saturday I was there, it was windy for a change, so I went kiteboarding over the boneyard with my custom fish without foot straps. Now you wonder what that is. That's stupid. <laughs> foot straps would have kept me on the board. Boneyard, that's where the coral reef is just below the surface of the water. It's like Mother Nature said, hey, let's put some big rocks there just for him. <laughs> well, foot straps would have kept me on the board. I blew a jibe and got drunk over the coral reef and fed the fish with donations of skin <laughs> from my knees one foot and another body part I don't talk about much. <laughs> My left thigh. The fish said, blah, 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 thank me, Lulu, for the food. <laughs> Coming back home on Hawaiian Airlines, I got very well acquainted with the airline bathrooms. And it's like Boeing engineer said, let's measure people and make our bathrooms three inches smaller. <laughs> and then they situate them so the wall is curved and you have to stand like this to be in position. And then when you go in, you notice the door opens in, which means you have even less space than you started with and they rub it in with a note on the handle that says pull, which means you have to touch the place that everybody else has touched after they've touched their yeah. stuff. <laughs> and you're really out of space if you're a young guy with a boner. <laughs> you get those? <laughs> Hey, hey, let, no, no, he was success, he was successful, he got him to laugh, the first time he laughed tonight. You have no idea how difficult that is. You go, hey, I'm leaving, bye Jerry. That gives a whole new meaning, though, for the expression hitting the wall. <laughs> and then there's no delay on the water faucet, 
So getting your hands under there while the water's still running, well, you're not going to get there in time, kind of like the last time you had diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> then the spring, the uh, paper towels are packed in so tightly and the opening is narrower than the paper towels, you get confetti. <laughs> The spring on the waist door is so powerful you get the confetti back in your face. And for me it looks something like this. <laughs> Ladies, do you know what I just did? <laughs> I just raised the toilet seat. You didn't even notice. Oh yes, we did. And I wouldn't have had to. Because I'm in this bathroom by myself. Nobody would have known the difference. Besides, it's an imaginary bathroom. I'm going to do it again, and I want to hear some encouragement, applause, whoops, hollers, or something. What are you three guys cheering about? Whose side are you on? <laughs> I said that to one guy in the show and he turned around and faced backwards the entire rest of the show. <laughs> well, then you do your thing. You'll have to change this visual if you're a lady. Or from San Francisco. Or a daddle. Do you know what a daddle is? No. Don't ask, don't tell. Oh. <laughs> you can't rush a good thing. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the flesh is so violent the toilet paper blows in the wind? <laughs> no, not that kind this time either. <laughs> That was the person before me. <laughs> My next trip was the opposite direction to the Outer Banks. Comedy and kiteboarding. Let's hear it by applause if you've heard of the Outer Banks. More people than usual. Well, we didn't get everybody, so how about if you've heard of Hatteras Island? Kitty Hawk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, brothers. Yeah. We didn't get everybody yet either. How about airplanes? Oh. <laughs> We're worried about you. I guess your hands are too cold to apply. You better be worried, Dave. <laughs> It's all located off the coast of North Carolina with some of the best kiteboarding conditions in the world. When there wasn't enough wind to kiteboard, I went sup with my friend Tim. While I was barely able to balance on my board, he was on his doing yoga for the flexibility Show off. <laughs> Let's hear it by applause if you've done yoga. Yay. And your name? Liz. Liz. Liz, namaste. <laughs> namaste. Now, see, Liz is proper. Now, you three guys back there at the table, listen up. You might learn something. <laughs> Liz knows that namaste stands for howdy partner. I know about this yoga stuff because on Hatteras Island I took my first class for the view of the ocean. Turns out the class was inside with the lights out. 
But I had no idea that yoga could give you such a crick in the neck. Must have been all the spandex. <laughs> Heather, our instructor, said, just relax. Well, she had us holding the two by four. Now, you yoga types call that the plank position. <laughs> That's like me telling you to relax with one foot on the dock and the other on the boat. <laughs> I go down farther, but I hurt myself. <laughs> Some of you aren't laughing because I'm only a white guy. <laughs> oh, that one takes a while. <laughs> Yeah, it just takes the right kind of encouragement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the most difficult position for me was the doggy style. Now, you yoga types call that the downward facing dog. Because you haven't yet invented the gangnam style. <laughs> That wasn't all I had to hold. I had a determined methane bubble that desperately wanted to reach the atmosphere. Now some of you medical types know that is a fart. <laughs> With concerted effort, I was able to hold it. Not the doggy style, though. And after the class, Heather came around, the instructor came around, and use some smelly stuff to massage my head. This one. I just hope she didn't mess up my hair. Oh, that was a joke. This hair is a joke. What should be growing up here is growing out my ears. Well, at least it keeps the bugs out. My ex says, it keeps the bugs in with all the craziness. <laughs> I have a special hairstyle. I call it the National Geographic hairstyle. It's three peninsulas. And the center peninsula is gradually becoming an island <laughs> with less and less grass. Now, how come you're nodding your head? You have more hair than I ever will. Probably than I ever had. <clears throat> I'm not the only one with a special hairstyle. We have a couple people with a special hairstyle here. They didn't sit to the front, but that's all right. I call it the... I call it the Europa hairstyle. Anybody know what Europa is? That's the second moon of Jupiter. And it's the smoothest object in the solar system. Oh. Let's hear it for the Europa people. <laughs> Actually, you folks aren't quite there yet. Don't give up. Keep working on it. You'll get there eventually. <laughs> I say, does anybody here save boxes? Let's hear it by applause if you save your boxes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The rest of you, you better start reading your instructions because when you buy something, it says save the box. So back home in Phoenix, I've got boxes for office chair, TV, mother-in-law. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
my boxes are getting stacked so high, I may have to move out <laughs> into a box. Which would be difficult with a mother-in-law. Actually, that's not true because she's dead. I need, need to tell you, I'm dying. Well, so are you. We just don't know when. So, I encourage people to plan for it with their advanced directives and PODs and stuff like that. Don't leave a mess like Stanley left us. That was a... Took us three months to get everything all figured. Stanley figured that uh, God would take care of him and everything else, and God didn't take care of him or anything else. So we had to straighten out everything. Anyway, be kind to your people that are around. So we moved my mother-in-law out in her own box, pine box. Uh -oh. <laughs> yep. Now I I plan to to live a long time. On my 100th birthday, I plan to still be in the game. Although I'm sure I won't know what game. <laughs> or the score. But I'll still be on the bottom <laughs> with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I went to... Uh, grocery store to buy some bananas and I picked a few out. Along came old Oscar. Now I'm not sure if that was his real name, but he certainly was a grouch. Some of you remember Sesame Street. I said, uh, I hope you find some good bananas, but you can't have these, they're mine. Don't want them. Do you like stand-up comedy? No. Do you like to laugh? No. I think his name was Oscar because he was behind me in the checkout. And when I left, he said, good riddance. But don't blame him. He, we don't know what he was dealing with. He may have just lost his wife and didn't find her. <laughs> Or maybe he did find her. <laughs> maybe he forgot to pull out. Really <laughs> me. Of course, of course, he's trying to figure out how to get in in the first place. <laughs> Just ask her. <laughs> I try to be healthy, try to eat right. I got a hold of some string beans that were so stringy by the time I finished eating them, I'd already flossed my teeth. <laughs> I don't know what this hip movement has to do with it. <laughs> and I don't take supplements like creatine. Have you ever noticed the guys at the gym who do have those great big muscles? They have little tiny... Uh -huh. Thumbs. <laughs> oh, this is an adult crowd. They also have little tiny dicks. <laughs> That's what you were thinking anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a little workout at Gold's Gym this morning. I recognize the equipment from when I was a kid during the Spanish Inquisition. Now, I need to explain a little history to you people. The Spanish Inquisition was 650 years ago. All they did is added foam pads and logos to the machines from back then. And you know, I've had to quit doing the bench presses because they both them all down. <laughs> I can tell you haven't pressed any benches. <laughs> and I've had a terrible time getting the 45 pound dumbbells home. You know, the free weights. 
put one of those in my gym bag, I'd be so unbalanced. My ex would say, Lou, you've always been unbalanced. You gotta fix your posture. I, th <laughs> I thought about putting one in each hand, but wouldn't it look suspicious leaving the gym with two gym bags? And I couldn't run. <laughs> Speaking of running, when I go to Walmart, I don't park close to the door so I can stir up my tired blood as I run in for a few things. After I made my selection, running back to my van, the kid said, Hey, Grandpa, how come you're running so fast? Well, you would be too, son, if you've been shoplifting. <laughs> strain beams <laughs> and well there in the gym when I was a kid if I wanted to see some agony I'd say hey I'm going to go down to the dungeon and visit the inquisitor you guys say strange things you say I'm going to go down the street and visit my chiropractor <laughs> and then have you ever noticed that back then from the old pictures that the naked guys on the rack always had a little white cloth covering just their special spot. I was the towel boy. <laughs> hey, don't string them out yet. I've got the towel here. <laughs> Hey, he was having a bad day till I came along. His arms were stretched out. He couldn't help himself. I was his absolute high point. Oh my God. Oh, I forgot. He was black. probably wonder what kind of a guy would come up with such disgusting stuff as that. <laughs> well, I didn't always, I didn't always go by Arizona Lou. Before 1912 when I, when Arizona became a state, I went by Territory Lou. <laughs> and before that, Caveman Lou. <laughs> These keep coming. <laughs> and they get worse. <laughs> Before that, ditch loo. I told you they get worse. It was just a little ditch. And then after it grew and grew, Grand Canyon loo. Before that, Jurassic Loom. <laughs> some of you probably think I'm from ancient history. I always had trouble with history. Probably started in junior high social studies when I kept getting distracted by an out of control boner. <laughs> I need to explain to today's society it was my own. <laughs> Whoa. Well, you know, junior high, you weren't always in control of your facilities. It didn't help that the, it didn't help that the fashion in those days was tight blue jeans. I looked down to see if it was noticeable. Then I looked out and looked around to see if anybody noticed me. Anyone? Yes, Miss Perkins, the answer's wood. <laughs> Row. Now, Lewis, you know that's not right. Longfellow. 
Now, Lewis, you need to pay more attention. But Miss Perkins, you don't know how hard it is. <laughs> Spring is busting out all over. leave this world going as fast as I can. Amen. Hey, you had walked this way too if you lost your balls. <laughs> Having fun. I want my obituary to read something like Arizona Lou died in an avalanche of boxes. <laughs> Let's hear it by applause if you know how to drive a stick shift. Highest percentage of any audience I've seen so far. But I'm not talking about a boner. Some guys call it their stick shift. The, I just increased his vocabulary by yes, one word. You did. Yes, you did. <laughs> While we're on the subject, <laughs> I was part of a clinical study of Viagra. That's why you stay at in Virginia at the University of Longwood. <laughs> I expected it to be a lot harder. <laughs> It was one of those double-blind studies. Even the researchers didn't know who was coming. <laughs> they put us in hospital gowns. We looked like Tent City. I was the only one without a rigid tent pole. Imagine propping your tent up with one of those things you get from Dollar Tree, a fun noodle. <laughs> Wasn't fun. We were bored stiff. Well, at my age, I was just bored. <laughs> and that's not as funny as you think. <laughs> We played Monopoly until one of the guys knocked all the pieces off the board. Target practice was, well, a disaster. The guys hated my favorite. My favorite was Twister. When they were telling me coming, they were scared stiff. Our version of tag was Pokemon. <laughs> Go. I hated it. I didn't have a good poker. We appreciated it when the researchers gave us a shake break. They also gave us homework. One of the guys says, Hey, Doc, can we help each other out? Well, let me look. Has to be hands-on. Self-service. No double headers. Do I need to explain? Ask me after. Oh. And I'll explain that. <laughs> now, that's homework is when I learned. 
You don't need special expensive stuff if you go to Dollar Tree and use their hair styling gel. No, not there in the store. <laughs> and if I had been Catholic, after each session, I'd need compassion. And the priest would give me a dishonorable discharge. The rest of them must be Catholics. <laughs> Well, the, I had to quit the study. The, uh, one of the researchers says, Lou, you're all nuts. I couldn't keep my eye on the ball. Make that plural. And so I had to quit the study without giving them any bona fide data. And, you know, you get one of these t-shirts and you'll have something good for cleaning up after your homework. I'll take one. I'll have it for you. One a year, right? Now we get, we, we get to some stuff. Now I want you to realize this next thing is jokes. You need to understand that. But my home away from home is a minivan. And it's right outside here. It's been the night where I stay. It's my home away. You've never seen a minivan with a foyer, convertible couch, office pantry, refrigerator, running water, ceiling fan, and electricity. But it's all in there. But I don't want you to believe what you hear about the old guy in a minivan. Because I don't have candy. <laughs> and I haven't lost a puppy <laughs> because I don't have one or biting, chewing, barking, peeing <laughs> or petting not that kind of <laughs> now you have to He's not only a good water boy, he also brings the candy. <laughs> there he goes. And he had quite a bit of it, too. He learned that from getting in bands. <laughs> Most of them were white. Well, he's Navy. You know, with the days... <laughs> he brings the candy. <laughs> With today's technology, I could get lots of kids. I, well, I'd say, hey, I've got Wi-Fi, unlimited data, no throttling, privacy windows. Oh, I see you broke your screen. I can fix it, but you'll have to get in line. I could, now, you meant, these are jokes, man. I could get so many kids, I'd have to beat them off. <laughs> That's funny. Don't think about that one. That's hilarious. Because in 1958 to 67, that would have been accepted. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a priest. <laughs> oh, I've got something in my hand. I don't believe it. It's about six inches long. It's hard. It's mostly round. It's red on the tip. I can tell by the thumb action. It's what's inside it that gives it its functionality. 
I'm talented. I can blow it. At the same time, I hold it. I can spin it around. Well, this isn't dirty. It's clean. I washed it today. Lots. <laughs> Let's hear it by applause if you don't want to see it. <laughs> Let's hear it by applause if you want me to pull it out of my pants right now. If you don't want to see it, hide your eyes on three. One, two, three. Now you peeked at first, I saw that. I couldn't even tell you where the microphone was. This is an atomometer. The spinning magnets inside register the wind speed on your phone. They're good for flying, <laughs> kiteboarding, sailing, for stand-up comedy. <laughs> blow, blow on this side. Absolutely none of that. There you go, John. Blow, John. Yeah. Blow, John. Blow, John. Blow, John. Blow, John. Blow, John. I won't tell anybody what you just did. You blew so well. Of course, I won't have to. John, it was all on video. You'll <laughs> be playing on the screens for the next two weeks. Yep. Do we have to get a bigger TV for that one? If this, if this is the best show so far this tour, so you might make it to my. Uh, YouTube channel or my website or on my press kit. So that that's cool. <laughs> I had <laughs> I had voice surgery, and it's embarrassing when my voice goes up high. Imagine doing comedy with a voice that sounds like Martha Stewart. I'll answer the phone. I'll say hello. May I please speak to the man of the house? I am the man. I need to explain to young people, phones don't make that noise anymore. That's called a legacy sound. Or worse yet, I'll say, hello. Are your parents home? Yes. I put them up on the mantle. They told me in life to earn everything. So I put them in their urns. Hey, you folks are great. It's been about an hour. Well, I'm still alive. <laughs> so is John and your life. Cool. Hey, you people are absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Be sure to stop by there. Some things I didn't mention is we've got a tip jar there. You can donate to Alzheimer's. It'll go 100% to Alzheimer's. You can tip to me. It'll go 100% to me. Any merchandise you buy. And be sure to tip your, uh, your kitchen staff. Okay, thank you very much. You got to get Lou, thank you so much. Man. Oh. Yeah.